Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you with Nigel's Modeling Bench. And we've got now part 22, I can't believe, part 22 of this uh, B52 beginner's build. Big bad buff build for beginners is what it's called. And as you can see here on the bench, we've got the fuselage. So I've now gone over and sanded out all that Mr. Service that was on the top. And I've put another guide coat on. So in this video, you're going to see properly how to use a, a guide coat. And then underneath, I've got some resin on it there from making resin parts. Um, underneath, we've got the Bombay all filled and sprayed and all, all sanded. And, and then I put a guide coat on there. Guide coat down here, guide coat all down the back. So today we're going to do some sanding and see what the results of that. And then I'll show you basically what it is you're looking for. And then we're going to move on and start looking at something else. I think... In not in this part, but I think in the next part, we're going to start getting this main thing together, getting the wings on and that. So we are getting close. We're going to get some black paint on this in this part, I think. So um, anyway, let's have a look and see where we are. Um, I need to get these little bits of resin off of here. I've, I've been making some resin parts and I've obviously splashed the, the fuselage, which was a silly thing to do. Never mind. So there we go, that's that sorted. Um, so what we're going to do with this, I'm going to get a fairly smooth sand. I'm going to use this worn out 400. Um, I'm going to use a stick. In fact, I won't use that one. I will use this one. This is a fairly worn out 800. And I'm using a hard stick and I want it to be straight. So you need to make sure it's fairly flat and it is. Okay. And then just going to lightly sand over the top like so and just see if we've got any high or low spots anywhere the gray the gray paint remains is low anywhere we see mr surface or gray plastic poking through is high but if we get a uniform sort of sanded gray surface like this that's the sort of thing we're looking for Okay, so you can see here we've got this, you can see where there's two dimples there. And the Mr. Surfacer is, is kind of a bit of a high spot. So there we are. You've got a very slight low spot here. You can see those two dark areas, those two little dimples. So if you just sand some more, if you can get rid of them without going through to the grey plastic, then you're okay. And they are absolutely tiny and they're right where the uh, refueling hatch goes. So I'm not going to worry about them too much. Just go down the centre here. That's all good. So you've got a bit of a low spot there like in, a, in a straight line and a bit of a high spot there. So we just keep sanding. And at the moment we're looking really good here. I, I thought this was going to be the problem area but it's... Uh, it clearly isn't. And down to the tail area here. See a low spot there, you can see a dark patch, just keep sanding. If it disappears or feathers out, then we're laughing. And we've got an edge here of Mr. Surfacer, so I'm just gonna take that edge away. You can see we've got a low spot there.
Okay, what we've actually got here, we haven't got a low spot, we've got a high spot here. If you look there, you can see there's an area there that's rubbing down, an area there that's rubbing down. So what we've got is not a low spot here, we've got high there and high there. So we'll keep sanding until it all blends out. And I say, I'm not using a sponge yet because a sponge will go down into the divots. It won't show you your, your high and low spots. So there we go, that's going to be good enough. I'm not looking for absolute perfection because it's going to be camouflaged and weathered anyway and it's going to be matte and you won't see it. But if this was something like, um, you know, a car body or, you know, something you were doing glossy and you want it to be really, really beautiful, like an airliner, you would want to get rid of that because it would probably show up in your gloss white paint. But, um, I mean, I can show you how to get rid of it anyway. And there we go. Now we're going to turn it over and look at this Bombay area. Not the area of Bombay, but the Bombay area on the aircraft. Again, using this hard stick. So it shows any high or low spots. See, so we've got a bit of a high spot there. That's no problem. You can see where the panel lines were, we've got low spots, so we'll have to go over them again. Anywhere where it's dark grey is a low spot, anywhere where it's grey, plastic or Mr. Surfacer is a high spot, which is all oh, quite obvious. And what we're looking for here is getting rid of these, these toy-like hinges. And I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm letting the stick do the work. If I start to put the pressure on, I may well rip the paint off. You can see we've got a low there, low there, low there. So we need to, yeah, I can feel them. So we need to deal with them. So we can put some Mr. Servicer on. You can see we've got a very slight dimple in the plastic there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Again, we've got a little dimple there. Which is extremely shallow, so we're not going to worry about that either. But we are going to worry about these hinges there we get rid of them so what we will do we will come along with our mr service so we'll put some in there and we'll get rid of them now coming down to the rear of the fuselage we've got a straight bit here You can see we're all good there, good to go. And then on the front here, again, no pressure, rounding that little lump there. You can see we've got something going on here. We've got a a high spot around a low spot. And I know it's on a curved area, it's a compound curve, but And there we go. Now I'm going to come along with a sponge and I'm going to use, this is a 1000 grit. And I'm just going to polish this area. And I'm a little bit concerned about this undulations in here. I'm 
as you can see the sponge is taking it all out And then the sponge will just basically remove any sanding marks that we put in there. Just look at that again. Yeah, that's fine. And I won't worry about the Bombay area because we're going to be doing that again. Once we've done those hinges and then just come across the back here. And this is just really removing any overspray, any sanding marks. And there you go, we can see we've got a nice smooth joint there now. And we'll get some primer on there and then we'll sand it again because we have got some, you can see we've got some sanding marks in there where I've gone a bit coarse. So we can just get some primer on there and then sand them out. And there we go. Looking good. And then across the top, just come along again with the sponge you can see now it's starting to show the edges of where the Mr. Surfacer is so you really want to feather that out you don't really want to end up with any um, edges you know it's exaggerated so you've got like this a sort of step there just feather them out just like so don't worry about the paddle lines, we're going to be replacing them anyway. And there we are, and then come up to here, being careful not to damage the wing root. Don't want to take any great gouges out of it or anything. And then the same on this side. And if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of sanding, well, wait till we start that VC10. I've got a 70 second scale VC10 build coming up for the Patreon subscribers and PayPal subscribers. So if you want to see some proper mega conversion work, not so much conversion work but correction work, I'm trying to create, if you saw my, my uh, review of the kit you'll see what a complete and utter dog it is and uh, I'll be basically fighting with it to make something that looks like a VC10 so there we go I'm happy with that just gonna sand over the front area now just make sure we haven't got any funny bits Make sure we've got a nice rate. There is a bit of a flat spot on the nose there in reality. So we could leave that flat spot there, but we want it to be radius around it. It's not flat and then sharp, it sort of blends in. Here we go. All done and all ready for priming. I just want to make sure there's no square edges on here because it's had a lot of Mr. Surfacer and a lot of sanding. And I just want to make sure we haven't got like a radius flat and then radius again. Again, as I say, when it's all matte coated and weathered and we've got the walkways down there, it won't show anyway, whatever's going on there. And there we are. There's our B52 ready for some primer. I'm just going to do this area down here and we'll get some primer on there. Okay, a good few hours later now, probably... <laughs> 
72 hours later, actually no, about 48 hours later. And here we are, you can see, I, I said I was going to prime it, but before I do that, I need to get these panel lines back on. So same as we did before with the stretch sprue, I've got the stretch sprue down here. If you haven't seen that about stretch sprue, go back to when I was doing the wings and I show you in there about how to stretch the sprue and, um, and replace those damaged panel lines. So, but because we've got a curve we're going over now, what we've done is um, use tape. So I'm going to show you basically how I do it. I've done the top, okay, and I've done all the way down. I haven't done this area here because we're going to be sanding and blending and filling and stuff. So I thought I may as well just leave those out. And then what we'll do is when once we've got the wings on, then we'll do that. And we'll have to do some panel line replacement on the wings. I've also got rid of the... Um, the refueling receptacle there and also need to do some scribing around here so I need to do scribing on the top of there uh, which I probably won't do on camera because it's very awkward shapes and um, swearing is the norm so basically what I'm doing now is I'm going to replace these panel lines down here okay down on the back so you can see you've got the panel line coming over the top all right, now if you're really unsure about how it should go, what you can do is put some tape round, scribe a line, mark a pencil line, whatever. But because this is underneath, I'm not going to fuss about it too much. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of my stretch sprue here and then just stick it to a piece of tape. Okay, and then put the tape roughly in the right place so that the line lines up with the existing panel line. Okay, just like that. Right, and then we're going to take another piece of tape and roll that over there and do the same on this side. Just get it so it's roughly in the right place. Okay, and all you want it is roughly, you don't, you don't have to perfection. So now you can roll the sprue around to get it perfected and get it down on. over the panel line. You want, it, you want it to sit as close as you can over the existing panel line. Not to either side of it, over the top of it if you can. And I'm just concentrating on this side first. Okay, so there we go. And then we can come along and take this side off again, holding this side. Give it a little pull get it all lined up just like that okay and then just tweak that one so it's lined up there and then once you're happy it's all lined up and everything Come along with your extra thin and just brush, just brush some extra thin in and you need to make sure the area is wetted. You don't want to saturate it but you want to make sure it's wetted because you want to make sure that's glued down. Okay and then we can come along and do another one. Let's come along to here, we've got one there look. Get it roughly in position, grab our tape, roll this over, get it roughly in position. In fact, I'm looking at that, I've got it roughly in position, it's absolutely spot on straight away. Wow. Okay, so that's in place. Take our glue over the top probably put a bit too much glue on there but you want to make sure that it's wetted you don't want it to be a dry joint because you're going to be sanding these down afterwards to blend them in okay and then take another one and I'm not going to do that one right next to that one because I might move the one that's already there so I'm going to come along to this one get that tape in over the place and then roll that over come in with the tape and get that one down over the line just 
just like that. It's that simple. And that's how we do our, replace our panel lines. Now normally if you were getting into advanced modeling, you would be rescribing the whole thing. Um, but as I say, what we were doing with this, this is a beginner's build video and scribing, fully rescribing a model airplane of this size is not what I would class a beginner's task. So um, that's why we're doing this. Now, some would say this isn't a beginner's task either, but this is certainly a lot easier. This one's a bit long. This is certainly a lot easier than um, fully rescribing a model this size. If you're going to start rescribing, you're better off getting yourself an old sort of 48 scale Spitfire or maybe like an old Ravel um, B25 or something. Something with raised panel lines that you can uh, work on. Pull that tight there over the that over that panel line. And then get the glue on there. Like so. Simple as that. And then just leave that for sort of five, ten minutes to dry, and then we'll snip it off and I'll show you that. In fact, I can do that now on this one. What I'm doing, I know that, that panel line came roughly up to here, so I'm just gonna basically make a slit there, and I'm gonna make a slit about there. And I can take the tape off. And then when I pull the I can pull the um the stretch brew off back to that tape. And there we go, back to the cut, sorry, not the tape. And then the same here, it was about up to here, so we can cut it there. We can cut it, say, here, and then just pull it off. Just peel it off like so. Don't worry about the glue that's left here. We're going to be blending all this in and sanding it all in and getting it all pretty much smoothed out. And you, you'll hardly know they were, uh, they've been replaced. If you, I think if you come out with a magnifying glass, you're going to spot it. There we go. Okay, so just while we're on camera, I'll do that one there, which is parallel. So I'm just going to pick that one up with a bit of tape. Got Jess hair on there. Put that down like so. Whoops. Put that down like that. Get it roughly in place. Come along to the other side. Pull it down and over. Just like that. And then brush some glue in there. Just like that. Job done. And that one will be ready to trim now. So we can trim this one back to say here and here. And here we go. Okay, so we'll do the rest of those now. And then we'll start looking at scribing this Bombay. Okay, so we're going to look at doing some scribing. Um, now, scribing is basically where you are scratching a line into the plastic. Um, so basically, like in this case, we filled all the gaps, we filled all the lines and everything of the Bombay doors. So now we're going to scribe these lines in and cut them into the plastic to make them like a scribed line. Now, on more modern kits, all of the panel lines would be scribed, what we call scribed or um, 
or recessed panel lines rather than raised. These are raised panel lines and really none of them are accurate because when you look at an aircraft um, it hasn't got great big gaps in it. I mean some of the kits like if you look at the model collect B-52 you know in 70 second scale the, the panel lines would be about this wide. You know there's just no way so what it's done is it's done for them you can see it here here's a model collect B-52 and you can see that is a massive thick line. Now in reality you wouldn't see that so you know and it's the same with riveting and stuff but as modelers we like to use artistic license so we we have panel lines on our aircraft to give them some interest the other thing of course you can do is just completely sand all this raised detail off and have no raised or scribed lines because in reality this kind of scale when you're this far away you wouldn't see any of it anyway so you know, it's all about making the model look busy. It's the same as when we did the painting under the wing. It may not be realistic. It's artistic license to make the model look less like a toy and give you something to look at, something to draw the eye to. When you look at a model aircraft, the first thing people always look at is the um, interior, the cockpit, and then they'll look at the engines, and then they'll look at the undercarriage. It's it, it, That's how it goes. So, you know, in my opinion, and that I've heard many people say that, now the reason we're scribing these lines is because it's actually a panel. So this is actually, these here are panel lines that are riveted. These are pan, riveted on panels. Um, so that's what these are depicting. But these are actually opening panels. Like the undercarriage doors, they open. So we're actually going to engrave them quite heavily. And you can see here that the actual panel lines that Monogram have moulded in are quite heavy. They're probably overscaled, but we're going to have a go at sort of matching them. So I'm going to use this big old brute of a scriber. This is this is a Tamiya scriber. It's also known as an Alpha P cutter. Um, you've seen me do a lot of reviews for different scribers. I love this one. Um, its biggest downfall is it's no good at going around corners really, and it's no good at getting into corners. You can grind the front of the head off, but you know. And there's a lot. If you look back, I've done lots of reviews on all sorts of different um, scribers. You can also use a pin. The only trouble is with using a pin, if you look at this when you draw it back, you're actually cutting a groove of plastic out and you will actually get swarf coming off. Uh, what I will do, I will grab a piece of scrap plastic to show you. So when I actually scribe on here, okay, if I get a straight edge, when I scribe on here, you will see that at the end of it, you can see that I've actually pulled up some swarf. So it's actually cut a groove into the plastic. When you use a pin, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, but I'll try and... What you're doing with a pin, you, you will be able to see it. When you use a pin, if you look at this upper line here, where I've scribed it, you can see it's just a line in the plastic. But here you can see it's got an edge. Sorry, my hands are filthy. I've been working on the Land Rover. But you can see it's got a raised edge. And what you're doing there, you're kind of cutting a trough. So what you need to do then is just sand it over. Or what you can do, if you want to replicate a, a raised panel line, you can do that and it will give you a raised panel line next to where you scribe, obviously. So we're going to be using a pin, obviously, to go around corners and stuff, because this won't go around sharp corners. But when you're using these templates like this, I'll talk about templates in a second. But when you're using templates and stuff, you need to use a pin when you're going to go around tight corners. Now, if you don't have any scribers, you can get a, a sewing needle or a, um, a pin or whatever and scribe away to your heart's content. You just have to sand it off afterwards. But, you know, something to get in your tool in your toolbox is some scribers because they are really, really good. Um, and just get the best you can afford, really. There's lots and lots of different ones about. Um, let me just show you... These are the ones I get from, um, these are the Q parts line scribers. They're the ones I get from uh, Premium Hobbies. You've also got these. These are the Holly, Holly scribers. These are very good. Um, the beauty of these is you hold them in your finger and drag. You're not actually putting any pressure and they are really good, but I'm not sure what they're like for going around corners. Um, and then there's this one here, wherever it is. This is an RB Productions one. OK, and this basically comes as a little kit. And what you've got there is a little tip on the end and there's a little blade on the tip. And what that's doing, that's actually going to cut a groove as well. So if I just demonstrate that one to you. 
that one will come along and you can see that that one is also that's cut a groove and it's a, it's quite a, a wide-ish line because the actual tip as you can see there is pretty wide you've got the support on there but it, the beauty of it is it comes as a photo etch piece like a photo etch in a model and you make it up and put it in your exacto knife handle so that's quite a good little tool as well for we might use that in a minute for widening them out once we've got them done and then for actual guides if you go to your local art supply shop you can get stuff like this this is a an artist eraser uh, mask so this is something they'll put on an edge to use a rubber if they're doing pencil drawing to get sharp lines so they'll put that on the edge rub through the pencil with an eraser and they get a nice sharp edge um, so that's handy for scribing especially if you want holes at the equidistance or whatever and that was the first one I ever bought but then you get these um, Hasegawa type ones you can see these aren't in very good condition because these are ET modelled ones actually um, I've used these for well, 15 years I expect and um, you can see this one's got tape and that's another thing you do if you were say using this square here okay you put the tape on and then you can actually stick it down and when you hold it it saves it sliding around it won't all slide around whereas if you go to this end where you haven't got the tape as you can see it slides around really easily so you just put that on with the tape and that will hold it and then what you can do then is just with your little pin is just go around don't put any pressure downwards if you put pressure downwards it will start to jump and skip about so you just let literally just follow them around the edge like so I've, I've gone way deep there and you can see you end up with a scribed a scribed square on the surface let me, let me catch it in the light there we go Come on, where is it? You can see it there anyway. So um, there you go, there it is there. And you can see it's got a, a rough edge on it. Just come along with a, this is an 800 grit stick. Just rub over it with a stick and it's smooth. Okay, so basically that's your, your tools for scribing. Um, if you want to know more about it, just ask in the comments below. But basically you get these um, these guides and here you can see this has got a serrated edge and you can use that for riveting. So you would tape that in position along your edge and then say you're going to put a rivet in every every one. You could just come along and put a, hot, put a pin in every single one. You've got a finer one down there. Um, you've got circles here. You've got uh, the oval panels um, and you obviously got the circles of all different sizes and it gives you all the diameters on them there. And then you've got these here. These would be good for your portholes on an aircraft or whatever. You've got these squares with rounded off sides. You've got rectangles with rounded off sides. It gives you all the dimensions on there, as I say. Um, and then you've also got... I've got one missing here. There should be another one in here, then. Here we go. You've also got this larger one here, and this one has the circles with the the quadrants marked out, so that's quite handy. So, and then you've also got your pitches there as well, so that's quite handy as well. And this has got a skull. This is military model craft, which I think they've gone, haven't they? It was a magazine, um, but basically, yeah, same sort of thing. Um, so there you go. So there's your there's your three different templates if you wonder why I've got this purple cloth down it's because we're going to do some scribing on the fuselage and I don't want to damage all the work I've done and also this saves it all sliding around so basically I'm going to get some of my Tammy or this is the Mr Hobby tape okay so I'm going to take a strip of this and I am going to put it on here along the edge like so Okay, and that'll give me something to work against. So what I'm going to do, I want to pick up on the sides here. With the, with the B-52, you've got these doors here. You've got a line there you can see which is filled with sprue goo. But these doors here, this is the bomb bay doors that open. So they open and then they can drop the bombs. But obviously the belly is quite close to the ground on a B-52. So these doors here actually open. If you look at some references and you look at them loading weapons, you'll see that this door opens and then they they bolt that, they sort of fix that door, this door to this door, and then they open the whole thing. So that's the way that works. So what I'm going to do is pick up on the 
the lines that are in there with this scriber. So I'm going to pick up on that line there. OK. And I'm going to pick up. Let me just hold this in place. Pick up on that line there. So I need to slide this along. This is really awkward. Scribing on camera, I think, is probably... Scribing and soldering photo etch are probably the two worst things to do on camera. They're an absolute bloody nightmare. So I just want to check that I'm all good. No, that's moved. So I'm in the groove there. And make sure you're holding this down straight. If it's all lifted up or on an angle, it, it, you'll get a, a curve on here. So it needs to be nice and square. So we can tape it down and hold it and just check again our ends. You see now it's moved slightly there. So I'm just going to pull it over a touch. There we go. And we're good there. So now we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is with this is just gently go over here. And one of the problems here, we've got plastic card, we've got sprue goo, we've got Mr. Surfacer, we've got all sorts. And that is the problem. You can see that gap in the centre. You can hear it there. There's a step. And that's the problem. So if you can, always try and put the model down rather than trying to hold it up in the air. So I'm going to work from the centre out. And I'm just, I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm just letting the scriber do the work and just cutting a line. Okay, and that should be good enough. So we've got a line scribed in there now. Now, because we've got a line in there, we should now be able to follow along and stay in the groove. What I'm going to do is just keep going with this one and almost sort of scratch it out so it's heavier, so it matches these. Okay, now this is probably actually too heavy for 70 seconds scale, really, but... It'd be no good if you've got all fine scribing in one area and then right next to it you've got heavy scribing depicting the same thing. OK, so that's that one done. OK, now I'm going to try something here I've never tried before, which is pretty daft on camera. I'm going to run over it with this one because I think this will just widen it out slightly without going too deep. And there we go. So that's our front end done. OK, now the way these doors work, they're in three sections, but they actually all open together. So I've measured all this up and basically <clears throat> we're looking at something like 30 millimetres and then about 45 millimetres for these two. So the first one is going just behind the line they've already got. So I'm going to come along with this one again, turn this around, get these, all these tools out of the way and go just behind that existing line okay and try and keep it square now the problem here is if you look we've got these paddle lines and misaligned so if I line it up behind this line I'm going to end up on an angle so I need to start doing some measuring so I get my rule okay so I've got my rule got my pencil and I'm going to draw a line 30 millimeters which is there and then another one here at 30 millimetres, and now I know I've got something to work to. So we can ignore the previously scribed lines which are now filled in. Okay, so we'll hold that down like that, nice and square. Check we're lined up on those pencil lines, and we are. Hold that down, and then we're going to come right around. Okay, I, I can't see it, you can. Right around the other side, you've got that line running along the fuselage. And come down to there. Like 
Right, here we go. So take this off now. So we've got our line. Now we can work. If you're a bit unsure, push the scriber. Don't pull it, just push it. And it will smooth it out if you're a bit unsure, if you think it's going to jump out. And the thing to do here is hold the end of the scriber. You don't want to go like this and start gouging in. You just want to hold the end of the scriber and let the blade do the work. Okay, so again, I'm going to work from the side to the center. There we go, so that's that one done. Clean the blade off and then we'll go from here. Okay, and then I'm going to once again go in with this one, this RB Productions one. Now, obviously, you can hear that it doesn't like being pushed. A bit like me in a car showroom, I don't like being pushed. Okay, so that's that one done. So we can turn our fuselage around. And there we go. We just come across the join. There we go, that's that done. So now we've got to put a line in halfway between those two, which is going to be roughly 45 millimeters. You can see there that's roughly 90 millimeters. So I'm going to go 75 millimeters from here. Little thing with engineering, if you work from here, if this is your datum, and you've done a line there 30 millimeters. And then you want to split this in half. Don't go 45 millimeters from there. Go 70 millimeters from there. Because if you've got a mistake here, you'll copy the mistake here. So if this line is slightly out, and then I get it slightly out again, and then I get it slightly out again, by the time you get to the end, you've you used up all your tolerance. It's like if you're doing holes, you've got your datum hole here. Okay, this is zero. And then you've got a hole every 25 millimeters. Don't go 25, 25, 25, 25. You go 25. 50, 75, 100, and then you've got your little bit of leeway, your little bit of tolerance on the 100, whereas if you use, if you go 0 to 25, okay, at 25, you've got your leeway on the tolerance, then you go, then you go 25, you've got your leeway on your tolerance, plus your leeway on your tolerance, then you go 25, so you've got your leeway here, leeway here, leeway, and before you know it, you've got three times the tolerance there, or three times the error that you would have made if you just did one line at 75. So um, something worth remembering, and I know that a lot of you all know that already. Right, so 75 millimeters. This is what I'm here for, is to try and inform you and tell you what you probably think is bloody obvious, but... Not everyone thinks things are obvious. And you've got to remember, there's a lot of people in modelling that have never been anywhere near any sort of engineering. So we have to cater for everyone. People like me and James, who've worked in the industry with aerospace and everything. It's all sort of just... It's just, you know, just... Second knowledge, you just think of it straight away. Now, ask me to poach an egg <laughs> or cook a roast dinner, you've got no chance. I could build an engine. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to go over here again and scribe this. Now this may not be correct for a D, but every picture I've got, they look like this. But I can't, I haven't got any images of a D close up with its doors open to see if these are where the demarcation lines are. Now I see monogram, I've got them different. There we go, so that's that line in there. So then we'll work from the centre out again. Just 
score the plastic. Okay, now remember, you wouldn't normally go this heavy. This is because these are actual broken lines. Okay, then the RB production one again. There we go, happy with that. We won't, you won't see what this is like until you come in with some primer. I'm just going to clean off the ends with my scriber there. Okay, so that's that done. Now this back end is a bit different. We have it, I said it should be straight, it shouldn't. Model Collect have got another thing wrong. I always thought these doors were straight, but they're not. They're actually curved on the back. These aren't, the side doors are straight and then it's curved. So what we're going to do now is come along with the with our tool. Let's go this way around so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to line up again on the on the existing scribe lines on the back of the upper doors. I'm just going to check. I, I think I've moved it back a bit. Just going to put that down in there. that down in there and then we can just scribe up to the existing line okay so there we go so that's that in there now I'm not going to do anything more with that for a second <clears throat> now I need to put these lines in here now to decide where this line is going to come from now all down in here we've got sprue glue, so there's going to be di various different thicknesses, different widths. Some of it's going to be soft, some of it's going to be hard. So we don't really want to scribe <clears throat> over that line and we also don't want to scribe over all these little hinges because we'll just get loads of little steps. So what we're going to do is come just inside that line. So again, with this tool, we can come along and put this down. Now what I'm going to do now is put this tape <clears throat> straighten out a bit first. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat again. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to put that tape like that and then we can put this along here and we can go just inside doesn't want to play ball that's not flat enough I'm gonna to have to use my aluminium ruler now we've got a guy I can't remember his name who asked Phil Flory about these rulers um, <clears throat> which was quite funny I used to work for a company that bought Rollomatic machines so you see the name Rollomatic on there. that's where I got them from and they are really really handy now the guy he messaged Phil Flory and said, asked where he got them from. Um, I have actually replied to his comments. If you want to send me your email address, I will send you one of these because I've got a couple spare. And that is an offer that's open to the guy that sent the question to Phil Flory, not everyone. Okay, so... Got that lined up there so it's just inside. Okay, now we'll check it's parallel. I can see here the angle I'm looking at it doesn't look parallel, so I'm going to peel it up and then I'm just going to pull it over just a touch like that and see how that looks. And there we go, lovely. So now what we can do. Again, as I say, do as much as you can with it down on the bench. So we've got our ends established. 
So I'm going to come along to here. And you will feel the scriber drop into that end. Okay, so now with no pressure, you see straight away, I just went with that scriber and it went straight into that soft sprue goo. Okay, and remember this is not a marathon, uh, a race, it's a marathon. It's actually this plastic, it's not very nice to describe. You can hear it kind of sounds gritty. Normally when you get a nice plastic, it's like Airfix plastic is lovely for scribing because it's really soft. And I'm going to come in with my RB Productions scriber and just run along. And open it out. Now I'm going to have to put some Mr. Service or something there. You can see I came along here and straight away the scriber fell in the the soft sprue goo and left a, a, a hole here. Okay, so we'll have to get rid of that. that and you probably can't really see it because of all the different bits and pieces that are hanging around but it is there now if I've gone slightly too far on this end what you do then is you just come in with super glue and you can repair your scribe lines with super glue and I'll show you that because I have gone slightly too far I think on that end Okay, and then we do the same on the other side. So we just put our roll down, put the tape down, eye it out, make sure we know I've got it out again. It doesn't need to be perfect because remember once it's painted you won't see the, uh, where well, you hope you won't see the white sprue goo line which is what we're lining up against. So if it's slightly out of parallel with that line don't worry about it. Okay, so now we can come along here, clean off the blade. We can come along here and hear it, you can hear the, the, the scriber jump in, listen. You can hear it fall into the line. So we can just come along here now and just scribe our line. And I'm just coming back to where I think it's got to end. Okay, so get the RB Productions one in there. Just widen it up a bit. There we go, so that's our line in there now. So now we've got all these lines in here, all we've got to do now is this back one and then we've got to do the centre. So basically the way this works, these doors here are square on the ends 
okay these upper doors and then the lower doors have a curve so what I've done is made a template so I did this off camera so now we know I need to mark where our center line is don't I so I need to get my rule and put my rule here and just mark the center line. Now unfortunately we're going to have to scribe the center of the Bombay doors through the filler and plastic card and whatever so that's going to be a problem. I need to make that mark that line longer. I didn't make it long enough. Whoops. Okay, so now we can just put this in place, get some more tape. And I'm going to put the tape over the middle of the jig so I can see the, the line to line it up with, but I don't want the... And then I'm just going to hold this up like this. I've got the belly rested, the, sorry, the nose rested in my belly. I'm going to line that center line up on there and then push it forward so that the radius comes and meets that line that's around there like so okay so now you can see we can scribe around there and it's going to meet the corner of that line there so we can just come in now very lightly very lightly don't try and gouge this out at all you can see the way I'm holding the scriber it's got no pressure on it whatsoever Just going to keep on going. And as you can see, I'm just inside of where it was, where the old line was. And that's always the best thing to do. Is, is stay, stay away from the original line. Okay? See the scribers just staying in that groove. It actually feels very hard. I'm wondering if my scribers blunt. It's very strange. This plastic feels extremely hard, and I know that it's not. This is like you know a HK, HK models kits. Their plastic's very hard. Whoops, I went, wrong line. went picked up the wrong line there, you see, and I went through the sprue goo. So we've got another hole. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got our lines picked out there. And all we've got to do now is the centre line. So we'll get our rule, rule tape down. Like so. Hold that in place. And unfortunately, times like this, you cannot avoid going over your filler, glue, whatever. You just have to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure we've got a nice... end point on here so just pick up in that end draw the scriber back and let it fall in at either end
and there we are. I'm tempted to just give it a little gentle stroke. There we go. So there we are guys. There you are. That's how you do scribing. And it's really one of those things you have to get in and give it a go. You can read all the textbooks, watch all the videos. This is one of those things you need to teach yourself. You need to get a feel for how the plastic feels. You know, and you need to get a feel for doing all the different shapes, what you're happy to hold. I mean, I, this is my favourite scriber. Um, you know, I've got all the new ones and stuff that Edit Premium Hobbies has kindly sent me for, um, for demo. And at the end of the day, I always come back to this one. Oh, they're saying that those little, um, those little tiny ones are, are uh, what were they called? What were these called? The holly ones, these, these little tiny ones, they are really, really good. Not very much good for big heavy work like this, where you want to get big, deep, deep grooves. But if you're doing something like a, you know, a 70 second scale tailplane or something, they're brilliant because they're really fine. And the other good thing is you can't put any pressure. You can't hold them and push them down. You, you can only hold them like this and let the let the scriber do the work. So what I've got to do now is get rid of these holes. So the easiest way to do that is to come along with a drop of super glue in a Pringles lid. Okay, if you I'm sure you have Pringles in America, don't you? That's the wrong one. You don't want a really thin one for this, you want a, a sort of semi one. Remember, as your super gets older, it thickens up and it takes longer to dry and you can use that to your advantage. So when you find your thin super glue has really started to thicken up, don't throw it away, keep it. And you'll find that it will still work, but it will, its drying time will slow down considerably. And if it's thicker, it can be used for things like this. So I'm filling that hole in there. The reason I'm using super glue is if I come in with Mr. Surfacer, the Mr. Surfacer will wick into that hole and then I'll be putting two or three coats on. So for tiny areas like this, super glue is great. Bigger areas, I wouldn't advise it. And you need to remember that super glue always shrinks back, so put too much on. And then we can leave that to dry. I would advise against using accelerators. We can leave that to dry. And I've got a feeling as well up here I went too far. Let me just, just put some here. I think I made a scratch too far up here, so we'll see. And then anything else that needs cleaning up, after it's primed, we can do the same again. Drop a super glue and that'll sort it out. So that won't take long to dry. We can sand that down, give it a cut of primer and see how it looks. But I'm... Uh, I'm more than happy with how that's come out and it just looks so much better than the toy like <clears throat> I won't say mess because it's not a mess but it looks so much better than the toy like jobby that was there before okay so hope you've enjoyed that and I think that's been long enough we'll call that a day for part 22 um, what I'm going to do now is off camera I'm going to be scribing all this up here so I'm not going to do it on camera because there's a lot of swearing involved and there will be a lot of repair work. But I'll show you when it's done and um, I think you'll like it. So I'll see you for part 23. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've learned something. If you haven't done scribing, give it a go. Grab a really old cheap kit or something. or You know, some of these old 30 second scale Revell kits or, you know, the P51 and the Spitfire. They're like 10, 20 quid. And you can you can have great fun with, with rescribing on them, um, and also if you get one of the old monogram bombers or the Revell B25 whatever, the green plastic if you lightly sand it, the actual raised panel lines will show up as white lines and it will give you a guide. So and you can also if you're really good you can use the raised panel line as your guide as your rule to scribe against. I can't do that, but uh, I know some people can. So thanks for watching, guys. Happy modelling, and I'll see you all soon. Um, stick around for part 23 coming your way. Bye for now.